Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Woken, and I'm back with another Dragalia Lost video. Today, the reason I'm back is because a new Gala Dragalia is starting up, and we have some new dudes to talk about. So that's going to be today's video. Let's get into it. So the units that are being introduced are Gala Beast Celia, uh, Shingen, a Windax, Yukimura, who's a Shadow Lance, and Fudo Mio, who is a new uh, limited feature dragon. Those the, the reason they're limited is because they are New Year's, not because they are Gala. Two completely different things, unfortunately. So let's get into it. So, Awaken Agido and plunge into all hopelessness, Gala Beast Celia. The vertical shadow of Beast Celia formed from the portion of an amplified power conferred to her by her Agido mask. The true Celia uh, despaired over the world's deception, and this version incoherently mumbles of the same. <laughs> that seems like a real good dig at Celia, I guess. Frozen Anguish deals damage to surrounding enemies and inflicts frostbite. Water Wings of Judgment 5. If the user is attuned to water, increase the strength by 100%. Also, regardless of their attunement, grant the user a Dragon Strike while Shapeshift as Beast Celia. The Dragon Strike deals damage to the targets and nearby enemies and summons a Crystal Arrow. Up to two Crystal Arrows can exist simultaneously, but they will disappear automatically over time. Beast Celia's standard attacks uh, will bounce off these arrows. In addition, hitting a Crystal Arrow with Frozen Anguish will ca cause it to deal damage to surrounding enemies and disappear. Water, Desperate Ag Agony 2. If the user is attuned to water, increase damage to Frostbitten enemies by 15%. In addition, standard attacks will apply to uh, the vulnerability debuff while Shapeshift as B. Cilia when the combo count is 15 or higher. Vulnerability can stack up to 10 times for each stack, reduce defense by 1%, and Frostbite resistance by 2% for the remainder of the quest until removed by the enemy. Also, regardless of their attunement, reduce the user's defense by 20% and shorten the window between hitting an enemy and a combo counter resetting by one second. Hmm. So no matter what, you will... So similar to Volk, there seems to be... At least with, uh, unlike Volk, where Volk completely makes you susceptible to all ailments, her seems to be a little bit more... <laughs> A little bit more, depending, I guess, how what user is losing that 20% defense. It would really suck in, I think, um, using as the main unit, but using as maybe a side unit would be a little bit better. But also, regardless of their two minute reduced their user's defense by 10% and shorten the window between hitting an enemy and combo counter resetting by one second. Huh. Okay. I think she'll probably end up being like Volk, where she's going to be insane damage dealing. It's already really nice that she's lowering the frostbite resistance which is nice um that's going to be very helpful for uh, applying frostbite and stuff a whole bunch so you'd probably want to give it to someone giving frostbite um yeah the only issue is similar to volk if you are using them on the wrong team or something it's very easy for it to blow up in your face but if you're smart about it then this unit would be extremely easy to use and well, not easy to use. If you're smart about it, you'll know how to use the unit and take advantage of their, um, what they benefit from the team and be able to kind of negate some of the negatives of them, is what I'm trying to say. So, yeah, really good. And she also looks really good, too. I always liked this Agito form. Always have. Always thought it was cool. And now you get it. So that's pretty nice. Next, let's see who's here. Fudomiyo. I do this all for the Lake of the Lord Shingeki. The dragon of the Tiger Clan, one of the twelve who serve Amaterasu. Though quiet and withdrawn, Shingen is a flame ever burning in her heart. On rare occasions, her feelings become strong enough to make folks around her uncomfortable. <laughs> Kurakara Gust deals damage to one target and nearby enemies. It grants the user a Mantra of Compassion effect. Uh, damage is 417 over 6 hits. Mantra of cons uh, Compassion charges 2, but I don't say 100% of max HP does not stack. Wait. Grants the user a mantra capacity effect. Charges two bones like hundred percent of max. What does that do? Stormlash. Wind strength is seventy percent. Uh, divine mantras two. If the user is attuned to wind at the start of quest. Grant the user a mantra of compassion effect. Mantra of compassion nullifies damage up to one hundred percent of the user's maximum HP up to two times, and it will not stack. When all uses of this effect are consumed, the user will be granted the mantra of wrath effect, and fifty percent of their dragon gauge will be filled. After activating the Dragon Gauge fill effect will not activate again for 180 seconds. Mantra of Wrath increases the attack rate by 10% and adds 30% of the modifier applied to damage against the water attuned enemies. Uh, that sounds really good. <laughs> really good. 
She's a limited uh, New Year's dragon, and usually those New Year's dragons are always really sick with what they do. She is, like, for example, the Goro Tomo, someone like that, the bull guy from last year, he ended up being super useful for Galileanitis and anyone who really was heavy into four strikes. So I think similarly, you're going to have certain units that are going to take full effect of what she does and be able to really, really do a lot of damage, I think. I think, yeah, I think that's what I'm feeling right now with her. I feel like that's gonna she's going to be extremely useful. She's also very nice looking, and as um, my brother pointed out to me, yeah, her 3D model looking pretty good too. So, definitely want her. <laughs> Same thing for both of these. It's a shame both of them are dragons, because it, it would mean if getting either one of them. Be, having two feature dragons is maybe the worst thing in the world. I hate it so much. It gives you such sense, such a false sense of hope of doing anything. But hey, nothing you can do here. Next, Shingen. I am swift as the wind, fierce as the fire, and immovable as the mountains. Leader of the Tiger Clan, one of the twelve warm clans who govern Hinamoto. Though he looks the part of a war-weary veteran, he's younger than his imposing, imposing visage suggests. With the talent of looking after others, he's loved by the vassal subjects and warm clan leaders alike. Furna a shareable seven. Begin preparing a powerful attack, after which the skill will deal damage to surrounding enemies, apply a burst gambit called Tiger's Burst, and inflict Stormlash. Continuously tapping the screen while preparing this attack will result in dealing additional damage, attack for each tap, up to, two, uh, uh, up to the total number of veterans metal stacks the user currently has. If the user deals three additional attacks at once uh, in this way, stacks of veterans metal will be consumed and the user will be granted Battle Fervor effect. The user will be immune to knockbacks while preparing the skill's attack as well as when execu executing it. If this skill is used while the user has Battle Fervor, the screen can be tapped up for up to three additional hits without having or consuming veterans metal, but it will not grant Battle Fervor. When Tiger's Burst is activated, it will restore HP to all teammates. Damage is 1,600 over one hit. Special effects are Storm Lash and Tiger Burst. Burst Gambit, counter 30, recover plans of 140. Uh, first additional attack is damage 800 over one hit. Special effects, strength minus 10%, last 30 seconds, does not stack. Second additional hit is 800 again, inflicts Scorange. Third is 800 again, and recover potency and knockback immunity, last 10 seconds, and battle fervor, last 30 seconds. And it costs 2,040. When it's a shared skill, it's 15,026. Fearless Tiger grants the user a defense amp and the veteran's metal effect. If the skill is used while the user has battle fervor, it will grant the user a defense amp, increase their max HP, and reduce damage taken. Skill energy required is 7,500. Special effects, veteran's metal, sex up to three times. Defense amp, max level three. During ability effects, skill energy requires 7,500. Special effects, 10%. Amps, level 3. Nice, not bad. Defense, 15% is his co-ability. Chain co-op ability is team defense amp equals bog resistance 100%. Wow. If a team member is attuned to win, we're... Wow. Okay, so when they have a team defense amp, that's really nice. That's really good. Tiger Tenacity 2 grants the user two stacks of Veteran's Metal effect when they take damage. Veteran's Metal can stack up to three times, and after it's granted, this ability will not grant it again for 20 seconds. Also grants the user a unique Force Strike while charging the Force Strike. Damage taken will be reduced. Damage from some attacks cannot be reduced in this way. After charging, if the user takes damage while executing this Force Strike, the damage will be reduced and the user will be granted three stacks of Veteran's Metal. The user will be immune to knockback while charging this force strike as well as when executing it. In addition, when the user has battle fervor, the third and fifth attack in their standard uh, attack combo will create cyclones that pursue the target. Okay. Freeze resistance 100%, Tiger Tenacity 2. When the user has battle fervor, increase the damage dealt by their attacks by 50% and increase their strength by 20. Uh, yeah, this guy sounds like fun. <laughs> sounds like a lot of fun to use. It kind of reminds me a little bit of the Yukata Luka, who had a very similar mechanic of continuously tapping the screen, but I guess also Gala Thor does this as well, but when it comes to tapping the screen units at this point, I think of Luka, uh, the, that Luka, especially since he's also green. So he sounds like he could be a lot of fun to screw around with. Him being Axe makes me kind of hope that he has maybe a better Force Strike than what Axe has, so we'll see on that one. You can probably see it in the um, video that they released. But yeah, he sounds like he would be really strong. Most of the New Year's units are extremely good for 
the year they are released, I guess, is the nicest way of saying it. <clears throat> but they always remain really solid and really good for, for however long the Dragalia stuff, until something in Dragalia catches up and they end up being not as good, but um, they're always really solid and good to have, in my opinion. Because they're also limited, so it's not like you're going to see them again. Anyway, the leader of the Monkey Clan, one of the 12 Worm Clans who governs Hinamoto, Shingen rescued her from her clan infighting when she was young, and she was immediately thrown herself headfirst into martial arts training in hopes of surpassing his greatness. This is Yukimura, leader of the monkeys. Uh, Monkey Overdrive, skill 1, deals damage to surrounding enemies and activates skill shift to the attack connects. Phase 2 increases the skill area of effect. Well, phase 3 increases the area effect even more and unleashes the user's fighting spirit. The user will imme be immune to knockback during the attack. If the skill is used when the user's fighting spirit has been unleashed, a variant called the Monkey Tiger Raft will be used instead. Monkey Tiger Raft deals damage to enemies directly ahead and applies a burst gambit called Monkey's Burst. Tapping the screen a set number of times during the attack will power up its final hits, which will deal increased damage, apply Monkey Burst again, and partially fill the skill gauge for Monkey Tiger Chaos. <laughs> Okay, it's not a word I thought I'd be saying today. When Monkey's Burst is activated, it will deal damage to the affected target and nearby enemies. Damage is 1,348 over 1 hit. Skill energy required is 7,800. Phase 2, 1,722. And Phase 3, 987 damage, but it's 2 hits. And when Fighting Spirit is unleashed, the damage is 375 over 4 hits. Damage is 584 over 1 hit max. Skill energy required is 2,980. Uh, special effects, monkey burst, burst gambit counter, 15 damage, 4,301 hit, skill prep, potency 15%. And finally, uh, shareable, uh, 6 is the next skill, monkey cross drive, monkey cross dive, deals damage to the targeted nearby enemies and partially fills the skill gauge for monkey overdrive. This skill is used after the user's fighting spirit has been unleashed. A variant called Monkey Tiger Chaos will be used instead. Monkey Tiger Chaos deals damage to enemies directly ahead and inflicts Shadow Blight. Tapping the screen a set number of times during the attack will power up a final hit, which will deal increased damage and inflict Scorched. Damage is 684 over 2 hits. Skill energy required is 5,120. Special effects, skill prep, potency 15%. Once Fighting Spirit is unleashed, the damage is 101 over 21 hits. Damage is 747 over 2 hits. Skill energy required is 6,120. And when it's a shared skill, it's 13,770. Uh, special effects, Scorched and Shadow Blight. Co-op ability, 15% HP. Chain co-op ability, Shadow Tom combo time uh, 6. Might of the Monkey is the ability she has. Activates the following effects. Once the user's fighting spirit is unleashed, the user's strength is increased by 10%. The user's attack skill damage is increased by 40%. The user is granted immunity to knockback. The user's standard attack patterns and first and second skills are changed. The user is granted a unique dodge that deals damage to surrounding enemies. Also, by tapping the screen during the dodge, the user can interrupt it and perform a unique dash uh, attack toward the target. If a unique dash attack or force strike is followed immediately by the standard attack, the user combo will begin with a second attack in their standard attack combo. Paralysis resistance is 100%, flurry strength is 20%, and that is the three abilities of Monkey Girl. Um, great! Sounds awesome! I really like the name Monkey Tiger Chaos, so I kind of want her for that. This is a, t a horrible banner because I want every single one of these dudes. <laughs> That's really rough, but thankfully there are free summons coming for a bit here. Um, I'll have to wait and see because I remember looking at the data mines and the data mines for the next potential character to also be coming for New Year's is got me a little bit uh, frightened. So I'm definitely going to be, don't expect the summon video for this. I am literally doing the smart thing. I am saving. I am in no position to be throwing away my summons willy nilly. I'm going to be smart about this. Be good throw some free summons hope to get a good chunk of these dudes from free summons and if i don't it is what it is on that one but yeah if you're going for these hey sounds great and that's all i have to say on that and that's the end of the video everyone i forgot to say at the beginning but feel free to leave a like if you ended up liking the video if you made it this long feel free to tell me about how you feel about any of these dudes are you here for monkey are you here for tiger are you here for giant bird no she's not a bird she's a bunny but she looks like a bird Whatever, monkey bird. Uh, and subscribe to me if you want some more stuff. Now, if you excuse me, I'm going to go back to playing Spider-Man and wait for Dragalia to update more. So, <laughs> until next time, everyone, goodbye, and have a good day, and have a good night. Peace out!